There we go. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the short meeting to um, discuss and uh, have uh, a consultation about the agenda for the OVRU Oceania Regional Meeting. Uh, as you well know, the OVRU has a long tradition of open and consultative planning, and this is just one of the ways in which we uh, consult with folk that are coming to attend our meetings and anyone who's got an interest in what we're doing to, you know, to give inputs and uh, help shape the planning for our meetings. So I do appreciate your time. And uh, given that we're uh, a, a, small, a small group, I thought it would be good just to do a quick round of introductions. And what I might do is just in the order I have you appearing on my screen, uh, just ask you to uh, introduce yourselves. And the first on my list, um, Luke from UTAS. Yes, hi. Uh, Luke Paget, I'm um, the, what's called the, the Manager of Teaching Innovation, which covers a number of areas, as well as copyright at the university as well. So I have that lovely conflict of interest most of the time when I'm dealing with um, education. Um, so we joined uh, the OAU a couple of years ago and we've been internally trying to restructure ourselves to, to be able to be more OER focused. Um, so we added a number of things to our uh, curriculum principles here um, that are OER focused and our teaching performance expectations here. And obviously I'm coming here just to um, touch base around the agenda and um, uh, I, I must admit, um, Wayne, that I've, I've just registered for the uh, for the meeting next week, so hopefully there's still a place. And, oh, um, yes. Perfect. I'm, I'm glad you'll be able to join us, Luke. You're most welcome. Yep. Great. Um, so, uh, yeah, looking forward to the meeting next week. Yeah, thanks for that, Luke. And um, yeah. I, I don't know if you want to mention anything about the... the, the the project that you're engaged with, um, I know that you've been working with the University of, uh, University of Technology Swinburne. Yes, um, so we, we conducted um, a two-year project and it was funded by the Office of Learning and Teaching, uh, well, the now uh, gone Office of Learning. Um, and uh, the, the, the project focused on trying to more connections between the, the teaching uh, practitioners and the staff of universities across Australia with uh, effective licensing decisions and their, and their internal policies and trying to connect all of those little fragments up. And the reason we did that is we conducted some research and we managed to penetrate uh, 35 out of the 40 universities in Australia and we found that, that staff, uh, on the whole, there was... Um, quite a lot of open education being conducted. Um, however, 43% uh, of uh, the, the respondents in the survey actually said that they don't have any policies in place to, to, to deal with open education. No. At the same time, 70% actually uh, said that they, um, the university was definitely engaged in, in free education. So. What we wanted to do is, is, go, is look at why. Why is there a gap there? Why don't people know what their own universities are doing? And so what we created was a web application that um, allows staff to work through any staff at the university. So what we've done is actually scanned all uh, universities' policies in terms of teaching and learning and their intellectual property policies. So it allows the staff member to pick their university, pick which open licence they want to apply to their education resource, and pick which platform, if it's their internal platform, and then that actually draws all that information relevant to them together so that they can make a, a decision on what they want to do. That, that's it in a nutshell. And, um, you know, if, uh, if at the meeting there's time, I'm happy to talk in more detail about that project. Sure. Yeah, th thanks for sharing, Luke. It's, it's uh, been an impressive project. Yeah, uh, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Moving down the list then, uh, Ray, I have, I have you next. Um, just remember you still mute. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ray O'Brien. I'm a learning designer at Otago Polytechnic down in Dineen. Um, recently taken on some more responsibilities for our contribution to the OERU and working with Wayne on a, a few different courses at the moment uh, and particular interest in... Um, Gathering good ideas and finding ways to, to smooth out the whole process of going from an OERU course to having some formal credit. Yeah. 
Yeah, and developments are certainly picking up in uh, impressive ways at Otago Poly and um, in, um, of course, uh, with your interest and help, it's, it's uh, helping to integrate things with, you know, within the normal workflow. So we really appreciate that, Ray, and look forward uh, to your inputs at the meeting next, uh, next week. I'm looking forward to it. Yep. Moving on then, um, Neil in uh, Toowoomba. Hi everybody, yes, I'm Neil Martin, based at USQ in Toowoomba, and I'm a senior digital innovator here. Um, I've been sort of in and out of, of involvement with the OERU over a number of years, and a lot of the work, um, a lot of good work's gone on at USQ, and this space particularly led through the work of Jim Taylor and others. And in fact, the, uh, you know, open educational practice is taken very seriously, and we've actually now have a permanent member of staff, Adrian Stagg, who I was hoping he was going to join us, but he, he, he may in, in, in a bit. Um, and he's really now been put in charge of uh, building open, educa open educational practice here. With, with regards to me, um, I've just really completed a, a PhD here looking at some of the dynam psychological dynamics of engagement. Uh, open, 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 open. And I suppose I'm hoping to bring some of that particularly as well around the experience of using some of the technologies involved. And I've recently joined the working group on the mobile technology. And I'm hoping to come down to Sydney and learn a little bit more about some of the latest work that's been going on. Yeah, uh, thanks for that, Neil. And I um, mean, your background and experience in uh, related technologies is going to be a huge asset uh, for us in you know, getting feedback and the overall use of a viable product forward. So, yeah, thanks for that. So uh, next on my list, I have a number. I'm not sure who it is. Um, would that be Lance? Lance, Sorry, was it me? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. it was me. Hi, it's Lynn here from Curtin. Um, Catherine's also online with me. Um, so my name's Lynn Vautier. I'm Associate Director here at Curtin University Library in Perth. And amongst my many things that I'm particularly interested in is open education resources and their, both their creation and sharing and also the use of OERs created elsewhere within the course content of Curtin. So one of the more interesting things I've done recently in response to a request from the university's um, learning and teaching committee, I've been gathering intelligence um, from right across the university about the creation um, and sharing of OERs and also the use in course content. So it's been a very enlightening journey for me um, in some challenging some of my assumptions uh, about uh, what did or didn't matter to the academic staff. And um, this will result in a report going back to the university committee um, about fostering the use of OERs in, and creation, of course. Oh, well, that's, that's quite exciting. And, and also a continuity uh, from the previous regional partners meeting, because uh, <coughs> from memory, Lynn, yes. you, you joined us uh, at the last <coughs> meeting. So that'll be yes, good. I, uh, yeah, I did. I was lucky enough to come to, to, to lovely Toowoomba and I'm um, looking forward to joining you again in Sydney. Yeah, look forward to seeing you again, Lynn. Mm -hmm. And uh, Catherine from, from Curtin as well. Yes, from Curtin as well. So I guess just to uh, add to what Lynn's uh, said, in relation to OERU, I think uh, we've certainly got some knowledge of OERU at the university, but really hoping to step that up, which I think will be made easier when there is a, an accredited qualification available, um, but really trying to make sure that Curtin's still involved. I think we've actually got quite a lot to offer from across campus, so it's really keeping tabs with what OERU is up to and hopefully being more active in terms of contributing material into the future. And we're hoping that someone from Curtin Learning and Teaching will be able to um, to join Lynn at the, at the meeting as well, which will be great. I think it's the, the next step that we need to move along to. Yeah, wonderful. And um, uh, Catherine, you, you, you omitted to mention that you're also a member of the Strategic Planning Working Group of the Oh, yes, I did, yes. And, uh, <laughs> 
helping keep us on the right path. So um, we appreciate your contributions there. Um, so as, let me just say, have I missed anybody? I don't think so. That, that's all good. So what we might just do now is then I'll start a screen share. Uh, and in theory, this should work. There we go. Um, so this is the draft of the meeting page, which uh, uh, we, we, you know, we're starting to work on, and you'll, and you'll see that there's no agenda uh, as, uh, at, that, at this point because we haven't consulted on it yet. Um, but there's a link there on the, the page we'll be using for the meeting, which is the page we're using uh, to draft the agenda. I just want to confirm, uh, is, is, is that screen share cut all coming through for you? Yep, Brian. Yeah, yep, it's good for me. Okay, great, perfect. So um, there are one or two folk who have been having a, a bit of a conversation on the kinds of things that would be useful for us uh, to, to structure and plan the agenda at the meeting. And, and they listed there, of course, being an open wiki, any of you uh, can add as long as you do this before I wake up tomorrow morning because I'll need to cross this agenda uh, during the course of tomorrow. Um, but of course, being open, we, we can always tweak and refine at the meeting. So what I thought might be useful to do is just to quickly run through uh, the items that uh, folk have submitted so far, and then um, you know, we can have a conversation as we go along. And of course, if you feel that we should be adding anything else uh, for this, uh, this meeting, you know, we can do so. Um, the, the one f fixed item that we, we, we won't have, uh, well, we won't really be able to consult about is, and, and that's because we're very fortunate that Charles Sturt University has offered to host us uh, on their campus at, um, in, in Olympic Park. And um, one, one of the things that they're keen to do is, uh, because they've got Rory and myself there, is just have this short video conference. Sandra Wills will interview us about uh, strategic futures uh, in higher education, around open education, and there's a fixed agenda item between three and four which is uh, going to be an open video conference. Um, but of course, we can structure the agenda. You guys can carry on working in parallel if you want, or you know, sit in and see what happens there. So we'll, we'll see how this all pans out when we start getting all the points together. Um, I found at these regional partner meetings, it's extremely value, valuable to do um, one or two show and tells, you know, the kinds of things that folk um, have been doing and projects that they've been working on within OERU and really just sharing lessons learned and the experiences that they've gained from that. And the ones that we've got on the list at the moment is uh, Linda Ward, who's been working on uh, the Charles uh, Sturt University course on Indigenous Australia, um, which, which is now completed. So I thought it would be good to share a couple of ideas there. I've also extended an invitation to Ray O'Brien from Otago Polytechnic who are implementing micro-credentials and open badges for the, the micro-courses in a number of the OERU courses. And the third one there is Adrian was involved with um, the remix of the OERU partners um, uh, re recruitment video for students. And it's, it's really quite a nice example because uh, it gets away from that mundane Kiwi accent. So there's an authentic uh, sort of Australian accent to that video and how they went about customizing and the work we did in designing it for customization. So those are the kind of three shows and tells I thought would be worth sharing, you know, that are directly related to the um, sort of the OERU collaboration. So let me just open up the floor there if there are any other suggestions uh, that we sh should be thinking about including in the show and tell. Mm. One of the traditions at the OERU uh, open meetings is silence is assent. <laughs> <laughs> if I don't hear anything, it means you all agree. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> just um, one question, is that six minutes per presentation or six minutes in total for that section? Uh, what do you recommend? <laughs> no, I'm just saying the tongue in cheek. <laughs> six minutes per prezi. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it would be a bit tight, eh? <laughs> Any yeah, other thing? I think if I, if I try and meet that timeline, nobody understands me when I talk slowly anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, okay I, I'll still need to ch uh, ch check base with Adrian because I actually haven't uh, uh, confirmed with him directly, but I'm sure it'll be okay. He, he's most probably already had a look at the page. Okay, so then moving on then, um, what we thought would be worthwhile doing is uh, um, a high-level summary of the out, uh, outcomes of the OERU, the fifth OERU partners meeting, which was held recently uh, in Inverness, uh, as well as the decisions uh, that were confirmed by the Council of CEOs. Um, you know, I think it would be good just to update people on sort of the, the main decisions that were taken there. Of course, it's all published in the wiki, but there, there, there might be questions of clarity and um, people wanting to know a little bit more. I think the key things that we'll need to have a think about and focus on at this meeting is the, the launch of our minimum viable product, is, which is the first year of study uh, at the OERU, which, and, and there will be two uh, exit awards that are planned for. Uh, one is a, general, uh, a certificate of general studies that will be conferred through the uh, Thompson Rivers University. And the other is a Certificate in Higher Education Business, OERU, that has been put forward by the University of the Highlands and Islands. Uh, and I'm pleased to report that we will have sufficient courseware uh, available for these uh, exit awards as our launch of the first year of study. Um, I think we might also need just to have a little bit of a think about uh, the next uh, tranche, if you will, of course, nominations and the recommendations that have come out the meeting in terms of the focus of the, the courses we're wanting to integrate. Uh, some of the practical issues relating to uh, you know, credit transfer, accreditation, and the recommendations that have come out of the meeting in terms of how individual property institutions uh, can in integrate this into their local systems. And then uh, having a look at the due diligence steps, you know, the, you know, the tasks that we need to uh, complete for the successful launch of the first year of study, which has been targeted. The date that the meeting has put down for us is the 15th of March, uh, 2017. And um, there, there were a few snide comments around the Ides of March. Um, uh, we'll, 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 we'll see what happens there. So those are the suggestions around the feedback of the partners meeting. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Sounds good. Sounds fine to me. Yeah. Okay. In our traditions, uh, silence uh, means assent. The uh, next item there is, is really having a think about uh, the whole learner or marketing and learner recruitment piece. Uh, we were fortunate enough to get a little bit of funding support from the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation last year for a, a capacity development grant. Uh, they allocated some funding to a number of the grantees to improve capacity. And when they approached us, I, you know, I said to them that if there's one area where we um, uh, really need improvement, that's on sort of the marketing and recruitment piece. So there's a bunch of work done, that's been done there, and I th we thought it would be a good idea to, you know, to share some of the outputs of what we've done on the marketing and recruitment side, uh, and then also to you know, possibly have a discussion around you know, how this potentially could integrate and support the, you know, the business models of our you know, partner institutions, particularly within the region. Mm -hmm. So that's the thinking there. Thoughts, suggestions, mm -hmm. objections? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very valuable, I think. I'd, I'd like to know how we could integrate that or, or how that would be beneficial for us in particular as well. Yeah, mm. and, 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 and coupled with that is the, the work you'll... Uh, uh, Lynn will recall this week at the, the previous regional meeting, uh, we had quite a number of consultations around the development of open business models. Yeah, and um, there have been some really flash professional outputs uh, that have been produced from this, uh, that project around the open business model. So there are close ties and linkages. Right. With that. So I think we yeah. should, we should have a bit of discussion around that at the meeting. So yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, the next uh, item is uh, for those of you that were around in the days of the inaugural uh, meeting of the uh, founding anchor partners back in February 
2011, and it's, it's rather ironic that was the day after the um, Christchurch earthquakes, and it, as you will have mm-hmm. known, we've had a few shakes recently here. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it seems as though our, our meetings are associated uh, with earthquakes in New Zealand. But uh, one of the decisions we took at that founding meet, uh, meeting was... I don't, to, I don't think there's a causation there, though, Wayne. I don't think <laughs> <there's something that. laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, correlation, eh? Um, but one of the decisions we took at that uh, early meeting was to implement Stufflebeam's uh, context input process and product evaluation. And uh, we're now moving into the process evaluation phase. And there's a, a rough high level outline of, uh, of a plan um, around how we are thinking about implementing that process evaluation. And we thought it would be useful for this group to actually, um, you know, have a bit of a think around possibly some of the uh, server items we might want to consider for the process evaluation, focusing on both other institutions that have been involved in, you know, developing MVP as well as some of the work and data we're wanting to collect from learners in the implementation of MVP. So that's what that suggestion is all about. Um, any thoughts and ideas around that? Yeah, I'm hearing silence, so I'm assuming assent that that's uh, something worthwhile incorporating. Um, the next item is uh, one of the first year courses that have, uh, has been approved for credit uh, award here at Targa Polytechnic in conjunction with the decision that has been taken at the partners meeting and that is really to try and pursue and encourage uh, what we call open boundary courses. Now an open boundary course is a course that, uh, an OERU course that is taught to full fee registered students on campus learning in parallel with OERU learners. In other words, they use the same course and the same curriculum for both those target audiences and have interesting ways in which having, uh, having those two groups interact with each other. And the course that has been proposed for um, doing a bit of uh, prototyping work around this is a first year course called Learning in the Digital Age, which actually focuses on the learning and digital literacies um, of the 21st century. I know that that concept is a bit cliched, but you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and, and so we w- we're wanting to explore um, if there are any other partners within the Oceania network that would be interested in, in, in engaging with this process. And we're actually in the phase of the very early phases of you know, course development and assembly with this course. So it's actually a good time now uh, to help think and shape uh, that development. And I think there's a strong contact point, Luke, with some of the work that you've been doing around the um, sort of the open licensing and copyright, because one of the micro courses, the four micro courses in this leader course is focusing specifically on copyright in the digital age, uh, but obviously from a learner perspective. So yeah, right. It might be interesting, you know, um, you know, touch points there, which we can yeah, absolutely. Have a yeah. About, yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I'm thinking there'll probably be a number of points, not just the licensing, but uh, on a number of areas within that course. When, I, when, I, when we have a look, uh, it'll make more sense to me, I think, on yeah. next Thursday. Yep. But I think, yeah, there'll be a number of points there that we'll be able to um, touch on uh, that we're doing here as well. Yes. Yeah. An angle on that that I'd be keen to explore is that at the moment, the open boundaries concept, as, as I have it pictured in my head, is a cohort of students in one institution interacting with, in general, uh, a, a, a spectrum of independent students who are interacting online, uh, not associated with other courses. There's no reason why there couldn't be uh, several on campus or, or led. Uh, cohorts in different institutions interacting as well. So there may be a case for uh, us running cohorts at the same time. Yep, I- exactly, Ray. And in fact, that was one of the decision recommendations that came out of the, uh, the partners meeting. Uh, at this stage, there are currently three institutions that have expressed the interest in moving that forward. Obviously, Otago Polytechnic, uh, Quantum Polytechnic University in British Columbia, Canada, 
and Northwest University in South Africa. Um, but uh, it would be interesting to be able to incorporate more of our partner institutions. And I think there are a number of interesting configurations in which that might happen because you could, in theory, right, have just one of the micro courses embedded within the curriculum of an, you know, another full course. You see what I'm saying? So it's the kind of thing that I think is worth having a discussion about and just, you know, seeing what's possible. Yeah. Mm. Um, and the other aspect related to that, and this also comes back to, in fact, the first meeting of the OERU when Jim, Ta uh, Jim Taylor proposed the pedagogy of discovery, or, or what is, uh, is also termed free-range learning. Um, you know, this idea where you build courses in ways that encourage learners to go out and find uh, open access resources and OERs in pursuit of their own learning interests that map to the learning outcomes of the course. Mm. And we have one or two um, interesting implementation or technology implementations that can facilitate this process. So we thought it would be worthwhile just doing a bit of a show and tell in terms of some of the tech we're using to implement that idea. Mm. And um, I think this is going to be a powerful feature, in fact, of the leader course, the learning in a digital age course, because it suits itself well to that kind of learning. Mm. Mm. So that's kind of what we've got from the discussions I've had from a, a couple of folks so far. So let me, let me just open up the floor there. Um, you know, I'm assuming uh, a reasonable level of consensus around the, the items that are there at the moment. But let me just open up the floor here to see if you have any additional suggestions uh, of, of things that um, you think we should be covering at this meeting. Um. One thing, Wayne, and I'm not sure if it'll be covered in one of these sections, but it would be to to see you could do with a map of what 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 uh, OER are looking for. So, for example, we know internally here we've got leads on Indigenous studies as areas we've we've already released some open material yeah. which we can repackage and and send out again for the purposes of OERU. Uh, the op open curriculum work that. Um, that Karina was working on with the, the Open Curriculum course, um, Curriculum Design course. Um, so what would be good is to get a, a bit of a map of, uh, with the Indigenous Studies, for example, there's already a full sort of suite there and maybe that's not what 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 would be um, most most wanted from uh, from an OERU perspective. Um, so what when I come on Thursday, what would be good is to find out what, you know, what are the areas that would really clicking well in terms of the jigsaw of, uh, of content that you're after. Yeah, that, that's an excellent suggestion, Luke. And uh, it, it does tie in with a number, uh, one of, or a couple of the decisions that have come out of the partners meeting um, is around the prioritization of what kind of what the OER is looking for and wanting to prioritize it sort of in the next uh, year or three. So we can certainly have that conversation and, uh, I think the mapping is a good idea because if you've got, you can see what we've got and where the network is trying to go. Um, yeah. I think those would be good touch points for this conversation. It would, yeah, just an open map because uh, that gives us direction internally so to drive who we need to speak to and, and what content to really get, get going on. And, and related to that is there have been some proposals around the rationalization and restructuring of some of our working groups and, yep. and one of those is uh, in the area of, um, um, uh, you know, the, the curriculum development, uh, you know, uh, uh, assembling a coherent program of study, quality, yeah. and transfer. So there are those touch points. So I think that's an excellent suggestion and that's clearly missing from the agenda. Uh, I'll definitely add that in. Um, uh, other colleagues, Neil, Ray, Catherine, Lynn? One, one thing that's sort of come to my mind as we've been chatting this evening, uh, and I don't know how we would achieve it, but in terms of um, collaboration, just on the little problems and the snag points, the shortcuts, the tricks, yeah. um, I'm not sure how we would uh, facilitate that. Um, I, I do think we've probably learned a lot of tricks separately that would be good to have some sort of forum it's to explain. So it's around sort of uh, organizational implementation stuff, eh? Yeah, yeah. 
So, so one of the ways we uh, that has worked, I mean, let's just look at the numbers. Um, we simply got a number two on the list. Uh, we typically get these meetings is break up into maybe, you know, one or two or three breakout groups that actually focus on aspects of the problem uh, as, as a way of being able to cover more ground, so to speak. And th these meetings tend to be um, sort of planning sprints, if you will, rather than finite solutions. So we try and get first drafts of ideas out sort of into the wiki that we can then follow through uh, post the meeting. So they might, they might, we might be able to structure the agenda in, in ways that you know, can accommodate a couple more areas. You see what I'm saying? Because we, in, in, within the time constraints of the day. So, so I'll, I'll have a good look at that, Ray, and I think it's a good suggestion. Wayne, one of the things that I was thinking about, can you hear me? Yes, that was here. Oh, thank you. One of the things that I was musing over was um, getting an understanding of what is what within the current suite is actually getting some take-up with a view to 